Erev Tov, Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We have breaking news this evening, guys. We have been able to find more out about the Mekodeshit, uh, the conference that has been going on here in Israel since, uh, well, since September the 4th, and it's supposed to go all the way until the 23rd. There's not been very much media coverage about this, just a little bit of media coverage. I mean, we've had uh, the article in Breaking Israel News, uh, a couple of other places have brought it out, but no journalists seem to really be covering this event. And this event is a very serious event, and it's going to be far more serious than what you realize. We are actually seeing prophecy being fulfilled by this particular event. Now, before I take you, I'm going to take you to where we were live this evening on the streets of Jerusalem. But before I do, where we were actually at the Mekodeshet, one of the meetings, a meeting that didn't seem to be publicized nowhere. Now, the other, the, the musical things that are being done right now, they are publicized, but there was an event this evening right at the YMCA inside the basketball court that we actually had the chance to go there and see what was going, in, going on, and it didn't seem we were very welcome. The man that allowed us to go up and get a peek of what was happening uh, seemed to do so with a very much frustration by the people that were there. And they were quick to make sure that they got us off the property because it seemed to be a very secret moment of things that were happening. Now, before I uh, take you to this, let me share with you something that you may not know. Mekodeshet, what does this mean? It's a Hebrew word, and typically it is translated as sacred, like a sacred meeting that they're doing. But as an adjective in Hebrew... It means betrothed. And when you look at it as being betrothed, what is betrothed? That is an engagement. It is, it is a marriage. It's a bond that they're trying to bring together. And guys, I could not help but think of the very prophecy that I've shared with you guys here on Israeli News Live in our prophetic segments on many occasions here. Daniel chapter 11, and that happens to be in verse 14. And in those times, there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Remember, that's Israel's leader as far as from what I can see myself. And then it says, also the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision, but they shall fall. In Hebrew, if you remember, I shared with you that in the Hebrew language there, that robbers of thy people are the sons of the lawless of your people, the angel speaking to Daniel, so it's Israelis, and they're the lawless. In other words, they don't keep the commandments of God, and you will find you're not going to see ultra-Orthodox Jews really supportive of this. Now, I do believe in the background there are some of the Orthodox community that are because they want to see the Third Temple built, and I'm afraid that they may be willing to do just about anything to get that to happen. But it also stated, though, in the Hebrew language that they will try to marry the vision. Isn't it interesting, then, that Mekodeshet is to betroth, to engage one another, to bring together. And what were they doing at this secret meeting at the YMCA, which stands for Young Men's Christi Christian Association? Jews, Muslims, and that of uh, uh, the Arabic people there, and as well as Christians were all gathered together, sitting around tables, writing on paper, and we were told they were confessing their sins. Let me take you to that broadcast right now in front of the building while the event is happening. Shalom Chabrim. I'm Stephen Benun. You're watching Israeli News Live. We are here actually outside of the King David Hotel. And in the background, though, is the YMCA. The Mekodeshet, part of the Mekodeshet, is actually being held right here in the very building, the basketball court, in the background. Earlier this evening, what caught our attention, we were actually headed to the meeting that's going on at the Scottish Church tonight. It's about life and death. Everything, though, seems to be listed in Hebrew when you go online. It's very hard to find any English about what's happening at these meetings here. But it is an interfaith ecumenical movement that's going on. And when I say a communicle, my wife actually had a chance to speak to one of the gentlemen here in the building behind where a confession is going on. 
we were allowed to slip up and look inside. He was kind enough to allow us to look inside. We did look inside. We could see quite a few tables inside. People were circled around the tables there, but we could tell real quick, like, they did not appreciate him bringing us up there. Even though they didn't know who we were or anything, they didn't want anybody to know. They didn't want any media coverage whatsoever. But my wife asked him more, pressed him to try to get an idea of what's going on. And he says, it is a faceless gathering, religious gathering, an ecumenical movement. It is the Mekodeshet, as the sign says right in front of the YMCA. And as well, you can see a list of the events on the sign as well, those still upcoming events as this meeting is running to the 23rd. But the confession is what really caught our attention. What were they confessing about? And he said, our sins, the sins that we have committed. No doubt it's speaking about the religious sins, the sins that for some reason Israel must confess. As he stated, they're all speaking in Hebrew, but yet it was Jews, Muslims, and Christians all in the same building, but they didn't want anybody to know anything about it. Earlier today, one thing I'd like to share with you as well that we were able to find out through some sources that have an inner contact there in Rome. And that is, the question was presented, is the Pope of Rome actually coming for the Mekodesh? Because there's been a lot of suspicion that he will be here as part of this ecumenical gathering. The word has it that the Pope will not be here in Israel for this gathering. But it is a test run just to see how it will go. But they are planning another one in the near future. I, su I believe that this will actually take place after, sometime after October 31st. We know that Pope Francis is going to Lund, Sweden, part of the reconciliation of bringing the Lutherans back in to the fold, back to the Mother Church, according to Revelation that speaks of Mystery Babylon. And truly, this is a very interesting meeting that's going on, a meeting of confession. What are they all confessing about? We'll try to learn more about this and share more with you. I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live. Air this Mekodesh guys, that, that is just very much concerning to me. And, and now that we are seeing what's really going on, uh, it is alarming. Now, by the way, um, and as we mentioned there on the street there, I have a very good inside connection. And I was able to find out that even though there's been a lot of talk that the Pope of Rome will be coming here to Israel during this Mekodesh time here in September, that he actually will not be coming. Now, I personally have expected that he would come secretly and slip out secretly. But from the word that I have gotten thus far, and I, I really trust this source, that he's not coming this time, that this is actually the first trial run but also, no one knew about what we ran into tonight, this confession thing. It might be the Pope of Rome, on October 31st, he goes to Lund, Sweden. Isn't it kind of interesting, Sweden, where the Nobel Peace Prize happens to be awarded every year? And here we see the scriptures saying, they say, peace, peace, and there is no peace. Maybe what the Pope of Rome is planning on is after the reconciliation on October the 31st on Halloween in America, by the way. Isn't it kind of ironic? Kind of the spooky spirits that all get together. And if you know anything about Stockholm and down there, what, oh, that, we'll save that for another message, guys. But let me just say this here. That the fact that the Nobel Peace Prize is there, I believe that somewhere along the line, Pope Francis is going to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. And it may have every bit to do with where the scripture says they will say peace and safety and there is no peace. I think that's coming. And they may very well, I think it's November the 20th that the year of mercy comes to an end. And so this may be when we find that Pope Francis will have a surprise visit to Israel. Might be, now it's only a suggestion, a conjecture here, he might come right at that time of the ending of the year of mercy to kind of crown off what he has been doing. We'll be watching closely, but one thing's for sure, this Daniel 11 
What a powerful scripture that we have there where Daniel himself, the prophet Daniel, and I just, I got to, guys, I got to just, I got to share that with you in the Hebrew language just so if you happen to be a, a Jewish believer and you're watching, I want you to be able to see this for yourself, just exactly what the prophet Daniel says here because then you will understand this for yourself. But in Daniel chapter 11, we scroll down here, I believe that was verse 14, it says, In those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south. Also the children of the violent, now this is from Mamre's translation, but it says, Uvanei amcha. That's the sons of the lawless. Okay? Among thy people shall lift themselves up to establish the vision. Now I know it's kind of an awkward wording here to translate, but actually, Inasau, Lacha Amit, uh, Hazon, this is to marry the vision. It is an espousal. A mekadeshet is a betrothal. They are actually trying right now during September, they are trying to marry the vision. You're seeing Daniel chapter 11 verse 14 being fulfilled before your eyes and they're making it as a faceless religion the way the guy says. In other words, he's trying to explain it. I, I realize he's, he's no doubt a native Israeli because his English is pretty good English. He had good fluent English, but, you know, trying to make that expression. What was he doing? He was doing like what the Pope has been saying here recently, that we all serve the same God. And he's trying to bring together every religion there is in the world. Not just the Muslims, Jews, and Christians. He's talking about the Buddhists, the Hindus, and everything else. And just, you know, basically, you all, we just have a faceless religion. Okay? We just all serve God any old way. We're just all going to get along. What are they going to try to do? They're going to try to marry the vision. What vision? When all nations come into Jerusalem. That's the vision I believe that they're trying to come up with. I think that's the vision that they're trying to marry. I'm going to really go deeper into this and dig and prayerfully look at the scriptures regarding this, guys, because it's very concerning to me when I begin to look at this and look at these visions that they're, that they're trying to marry, uh, so to speak here. Uh, very, 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 very concerning. Uh, I think of, you know, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, the vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jonathan, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken, uh, children I have reared and brought up, and they have rebelled against me. Uh, no, that's not the one I'm looking for, guys. Anyway, I'll get back with you on that. We'll go into that a little bit later, uh, but... It, it, I, I do believe that they're trying to bring, a pa to, to bring to pass a millennial reign without the Messiah coming. Or maybe they just think Pope Francis is their Messiah. You know, there is that prince that shall come that Daniel speaks about as well in chapter 9, right at the time of Israel's redemption. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Erev Tov.